Carbonero? Here. Daney? Here. Hopkins? Here. Rinky? Here. President Wallace? Here. <laughs> We've uh, requested uh, Pastor Andy uh, Doyle from Christ Community Church to do our invocation this evening. Pastor Doyle? Please stand and bow your heads as I pray. Father God, I ask you to be present with us this evening, Lord, through all the conversations and decisions that are made. Father God, I also just want to pray uh, that you're with the families of the victims of the tragedy in Dallas and also in Baton Rouge, Lord. And I just pray for your protection upon our police department. I pray for your protection upon our emergency personnel, Lord, that Bartlett will continue to be a place of peace and prosperity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Edwell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Scott, you want to open up the back doors, possibly? They're missing some seats back there. Next, we have the uh, consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda with an asterisk are considered routine. It will be enacted in one motion. Um, no other uh, discussion will be had on the items that are approved under the consent agenda. At this point, does any board member like to add anything to the consent agenda? Mr. President, I'd like to uh, add item uh, 12A1. 12A1, Brewster Creek Park Lot 9C1. Any problems with that? Anybody have any discussion on that item? No. All right. Anything else? That being said, I'll entertain a motion <clears throat> excuse me, to um, amend the consent agenda to include the minutes from the board meeting, uh, board and committee minutes from July 5th, 2016, the bills list from July 19, 2016. Um, also on the consent agenda under Planning and Zoning Committee, Chairman Ranke will be adding uh, Brewster Creek Business Park, Lot 9C-1, um, Exeter uh, Corporation. And um, under License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Aarons' committee, uh, we will have National Night Out McGruff Balloon uh, Special Display Permit Request, National Night Out Picnic in the Park Amplifier Permit Request, um, Mahdi Amplifier, uh, Amplifier Permit Request, the Jane Society Amplifier Permit Request, Zamora Amplifier P Permit Request, Heritage Days Amplifier, Heritage Days Right-of-Way Permit Request. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Kammer, seconded by Trustee Daney. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Aarons? Yes. Kammer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. The motion carries. I'll entertain a, mo a motion to approve the uh, amended consent agenda. Second. So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Aaron, seconded by Trustee Carbonero. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Aaron's? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. That motion carries. Next item that we have this evening on our agenda is the Treasurer's Report. Mr. Martin Oaks. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll start out uh, this evening with the motor fuel tax allotment report uh, for our fiscal year ended April 30th, 2016. Uh, fiscal year to date revenue was $1,053,412. That represents a 2.82% uh, decrease over the same time period last year. Uh, looking at our sales tax report, um, or March 30th of 2016, uh, total year-to-date revenue, uh, $2,071,432, and that represents a 14.29% increase over the same time period. Uh, something that I also wanted to do is to briefly update the Village Board on what happened in Springfield um, as far as their budget that began on <laughs> Um, what happened was is the state passed a six-month budget. And what that means for the village right now that we will continue to see all of our revenues flow. 
That includes motor fuel tax, income tax, uh, video gaming, and use tax. None of those revenues will be held up like they were last year. Um, the budget also includes uh, funds for capital and any grants that we have out there, that money will flow. Most importantly is right now um, funds are flowing for the EPA loan program, which is um, important to us because of the uh, improvements that we have going on with the water and sewer program. So that's what's going on right now in Springfield. Not quite sure what the last six months will look like, but for now, uh, the money will move to us. Have they been on time? Pardon? Have they, the payments been on time? Yeah, they've, they've been very good. They've Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Treasurer. He's been on time. Next item we have this evening is the President's Report. First. <clears throat> we have the National Night Out Proclamation. So um, as the village uh, once again prepares to come together um, to celebrate National Night Out on August 2nd, All right. in order to commemorate this community event, I would like to recommend the village to consider making the proclamation in honor of this year's uh, right. National Night Out. <laughs> Night Out event. Uh, yeah. I have a tacit, okay, so. <laughs> Whereas the National Night Association of Town Watch, NATW, is sponsoring a unique nationwide crime, drug, and violence prevention program on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2016, entitled National Night Out. And whereas the 33rd annual National Night Out provides an exceptional opportunity for Bartlett, Illinois, to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community crime prevention efforts. And whereas the village of Bartlett plays a vital role in assisting the Bartlett Police Department through joint crime, drug, and violence prevention efforts in Bartlett, Illinois, and is supporting National Night Out 2016 locally. And whereas it is essential all citizens of the village of Bartlett be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and understand the impact of their participation can have on reducing crime, drugs, and violence in Bartlett, Illinois. And whereas police dash community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness, and cooperation are essential themes of the National Night Out program. Now, therefore, I, Village President Kevin Wallace, do hereby call upon all citizens of Bartlett, Illinois, to join the Village of Bartlett and the National Association of Town Watch in supporting the 33rd Annual National Night Out on Tuesday, August 2nd, 2016. Further, let it re be resolved that I, Village President Kevin Wallace, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August 2nd, 2016, as National Night Out in Bartlett, Illinois. if you want to. I know that hot. Yeah, this will be really entertaining to me. Mm -hmm. And as a side note to the National Night Out Proclamation, for those of you in the audience um, this year, the village is attempting uh, as a celebration of our 125th anniversary to break a world record. And the world record is the number of simultaneous people blowing a train whistle. So uh, if you can go to National Night Out even for 30 minutes, the train whistles will be there for you. Um, pick up a train whistle, and we're going to try to break the record, which is 1,180. 1,127. So we're going to try to get 12 or 1,300 people to blow and you whistles. Get to keep the whistle. And you get to keep the whistle. All right. It's a bribe. Next item we have this evening for the president's report is a Pastamia Class um, Zero liquor license request. Plus, or class O, liquor license request, to sell alcohol at a wedding hosted at 211 West Railroad Avenue on August 27, 2016. 
Um, the village created the Class O liquor license for special events that enable those that currently hold a Bartlett liquor license for sale, for the sale and consumption of alcohol to sell and offer sale um, alcohol off-premises. Uh, for a planned event, um, that is by, uh, the event must be by invitation or by reservation. And uh, event at 211 West Railroad is, is, a, is that indeed, it's a wedding. So um, uh, Postumia has requested the Class O liquor license to sell um, uh, alcohol at the wedding hosted at 211 West Railroad Avenue, August 27, 2016. So I would entertain a motion. Okay. It's asking me. So if the, uh, the board doesn't have any, um, should we vote on it? Yes. Um, There's a board member that I'm wanting is the old. It's kind of involved in this one. That's right. <laughs> we might want to vote. <laughs> We'll just make a motion. Okay. So there is no motion necessary. I, I intend, unless there's no um, uh, issues with the board, I intend to issue that license for um, Pasta Mia. Also on the agenda this evening, we have Bannerman Sports Grill uh, Class O liquor license request. And this is an interesting one. Uh, it's, it's, they're requesting this to serve... Um, drinks at the um, Kickstand Classic on September 25th, 2016. So I'm assuming this will be at the finish line and a uh, uh, big um, event area at the end. Um, so uh, and, and compliance with the, with the rules and guidelines of Class O liquor license, I intend to issue this unless there's any issues with the board. And finally, I think we have a police video presentation. I think we're going to move that to another uh, uh, date on the, um, just for time purposes, we're going to move that presentation to another date. So you can you know, postpone that one. So, but, but it being we are on police video presentation, I'd just like to recognize our police department and our support for our police department with all that's going on in the uh, country right now. And um, just uh, thank you, Chief, for running such a great operation. and. We're 100 percent behind you. we have this evening is push. Um, Go ahead, TL. What? Did you have a comment? Oh, no. I, other than the fact that I'm so damn proud of our police department, not one. Yep. Um, next item we have this evening is a question and answer. Does anybody have any questions for staff? Hearing none, we'll move on to the town hall portion, which I think some people in the audience might be interested in. Um, because of the size of the crowd, um, I will, uh, will want to try to keep your comments to three minutes. Um, state your name and your address for the record. And for those of you that aren't familiar with how the board, um, the uh, logistics of how the board meetings run, you'll have a chance to speak um, at this town hall portion of the meeting. And um, it'll be on the record. And then we'll go through the entire rest of the agenda. And then the um, discussion portion for the board and the petitioners for the um, um, Ashton Gardens um, particular um, uh, item on our agenda will be during the Committee of the Whole meeting. And that is uh, specifically between staff informing us what they're proposing and us asking the um, petitioners questions about that. So you'll have a chance to give us your feedback at the town hall, which will go on right now. And um, if, you, if you can, I may step in. I'm not going to try to uh, limit you specifically to three minutes, but if there's a lot of repetition, we'll try to um, get it moving along with, um, with new topics because we've got a lot of emails regarding this uh, situation. So that being said, um, if anybody would like to address the board, this is the time to step up to the podium there. Just state your name and address for the record and um, try to keep it to three minutes. I don't know who that is. Hmm. Who is that, Mr. 
first man. Good evening, esteemed uh, mayor, board members, Lorna, Brian, staff. Uh, my name is Eric Shipman. I can spell it if you need that at 883 Prairie. Uh, first of all, I just want to echo the comments and the sentiments of many of the people in the community and uh, what our mayor and our fair reverend had mentioned regarding our police department and police officers everywhere. Uh, about two hours ago, we learned of another heinous murder of a police officer, this time in Kansas City. And so clearly, uh, our thoughts go out with all uh, the brothers and sisters in blue. And uh, we're very lucky to have the organization that we have here in the community. Um, first of all, I want to commend the board for being as pro-business as you are. Uh, as we all know, the board has tried to set uh, policies and practices and encourage business to come to our community. That has many great things for the residents, and I'm, I'm glad that you're doing that. I'm glad that you're trying to uh, look for alternative businesses, and this wedding chapel is certainly an alternative business. I do find it kind of ironic that it competes with uh, the village's own uh, golf course, which we spent several hundred thousand dollars on to renovate for weddings. But... I realize that you can't take that into your, your deliberations either. I guess my question comes down to do we need this? And the first question, of course, is location, 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 as it is with any real estate transaction. Um, I suspect many of the people who are here are adjacent or very near neighbors uh, to this proposed location. Although I do not live terribly close, I live close enough that it has a real concern for me. Um, it just seems that there are better locations for this type of business in our community. As you're well aware, we have several vacancies uh, in the community, especially along Route 20 where there are, uh, there's TIF funding and some other things that might be of real interest to this uh, entrepreneur, and hopefully they can consider those uh, some types of things. Um, additionally, there's been other businesses uh, recently who have been denied because of their uh, location or their proximity to residential neighborhoods, uh, businesses who would not have drawn nearly the same type of crowds or, or the same number of people. And so I hope you'll take that into consideration. Um, again, uh, some of my friends and neighbors, if we discuss this, they've said, well, that lot's been vacant forever. And you're right, it probably literally has been vacant forever. But I guess, I guess the question then begets, so is now the right time to build just anything there because it comes along? Uh, what if it was an adult entertainment facility? Would we allow that to be built there? It would certainly bring in more tax revenue. What about a waste transfer station? They bring in a lot of revenue. But is that the right location for that, too? So I'd ask you to consider those things in your deliberation. And, of course, the Plan Commission, I hope they'll consider these things, these things too. And then lastly, again, as you know, I'm very pro-business, and I know the board is, and I think the, the village tries to take a pro-business stance in everything that they do. But let's, as we must, consider the worst and bleak alternative. What if this business builds this beautiful facility? And I looked at the artist's rendering, and it's a, it is a unique and beautiful facility. But what if it doesn't work? Then we have this big, vacant chapel and banquet facility in the middle of a residential neighborhood to be used for what? We can't fill the Dominic's store. We can't fill other retail space. And yet we're going to permit the building of this, excuse me for saying this to the owner, this white elephant of a building that has really kind of one unique use. And if it doesn't work, what do we do with it? I have additional concerns about the parking and everything else. I will promise, at least for my one vote, with an open mind, to sit through as much of the presentation as my time will allow. Um, but I hope you'll take those things into consideration with your deliberation, and I hope we'll pass that along to the plan commission. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Shipman. <laughs> Anybody else? Good evening. My name is Jim Regan. I live at 446 Hillendale Drive, uh, along with my wife, Anne, and our two daughters in the East Point Estates neighborhood. Uh, I'm here this evening to beg of the board to stop this plan to allow Ashton Gardens to build at the intersection of Prospect and Devon. I've been on their website. I've seen the pictures of beautiful chapels at other locations. However, let's not be swayed by the window dressing. With or without a preceding wedding ceremony, what you effectively would be approving tonight is a private dance club to be adjacent to one of the quietest residential neighborhoods in Bartlett. This business would host a one-hour ceremony followed by a four- to six-hour party where hundreds of people would gather to eat, drink alcohol, and dance to music either from a DJ or a live band, which is really no difference from a dance club. We've known for years that this 
plot is zoned for commercial use, but this particular business is the wrong type of business for this location. Here's some of the specific issues I have with the plan. One is definitely the increased traffic. This location is not adjacent to a major road like Lake Street or Route 59. Uh, from any direction, guests would be passing through residential areas both before and after they're celebrating. Uh, there'd be parking issues. Should this business's lot ever be full, where would the excess vehicles go? I can tell you, they're going to end up on the streets in our neighborhood. Even if overflow parking is added across Prospect or allowed at Leisberg Park, uh, I'm certain that people will choose the closest option, which is the streets in our neighborhood. Keep in mind that with both of these issues above, our homes in that neighborhood are only accessible via two streets. Glendale and Lido, which are the closest streets to this facility. There's no possible way for the residents of our neighborhood to avoid this business by traveling south or west. There's just no roads. This business would bring an increase in noise, particularly late into the night. Again, any reception hall would have the same issues of a dance club once the party begins. In addition to music, you'll have guests and staff alike gathering outside to smoke talk. This would be followed by overserved guests stumbling to the cars and occasionally fighting in the parking lot. I grew up just outside Chicago where a CTA bus passed by my house five times an hour. And I can tell you from over a block away I could still hear the music and the noise from a nearby dance club. Most alarming for this uh, plan moving forward would be the certain increase in impaired drivers traveling through the heart of Bartlett. If allowed to open, Ashton Gardens would increase the number of drunk drivers on the roads of Bartlett, simply by the nature of their business. This would be true of any business that routinely offers a six-hour open bar. So I don't mean to single them out. I simply want to highlight how horrible a decision this would be to place this type of business in a residential location. Because there's simply no way for guests attending events at this location to leave Bartlett without passing through many residential areas in town. I completely understand the need to get more business into Bartlett, but this is just a bad idea for this particular location adjacent to so many homes and within earshot of hundreds more. If you approve this plan to move forward, you would be allowing allowed business to operate late into the evening when working people and families are trying to sleep and also inviting impaired drivers to meander through the streets of Bartlett trying to find their way home. I ask you, would you want this type of business on your block behind your home? I can assure you the people in our neighborhood do not. And I implore you to stop this project from moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Regan. <clears throat> Anyone else? Uh, good evening. My name is Pat Bowman, and I was here for the first time uh, last week, the last board meeting. And that's when I found out about the, uh, that's when we were going through our, the worst part of our uh, water taste and odor issue. So, because I am retired, being a former realtor for 20 years, um, I have the time to work on this. And that's what I spent my whole week doing. <laughs> um, I learned some very interesting things, not only on the internet, but through many, many telephone calls with various people, uh, with the EPA and Elgin, and also the... Um, um, Illinois EPA and they would then give me another contact so it was very interesting and um, I wanted to give you all uh, two websites that were, would be very important if you want to just make a notation of this one is very simple it's just called the Friends of the Fox and you'll find many, many interesting
things on that website that will tell you about the harmful uh, effects of the algae. That is what's causing this, uh, you know, bad taste. I'm happy to say the last couple of days it seems to have calmed down. However, I still can't drink it. <laughs> it isn't like it was prior to the event. And, um, you know, un unfortunately, uh, through all my conversations, I found out about some very uh, harmful um, bacteria that can come about. And that is on that website. And uh, there is also the Illinois EPA website that will also go into that. And um, one is very uh, short, but not very sweet. It's called HAB, H-A-B. And it stands for Harmful Algal Bacteria. And this is something that, through another director, the various people I talked to, I would find out a little bit from one and a little bit from another. And uh, this one, he was a toxologist, a doctor and his degree in tax toxology. And he said, you know, uh, Pat, he said, you don't have to, the uh, taste and odor does not have to be present in order for that algal, which is spelled A-L, G-A-L, to be present. Algal, if you look it up, is an extremely um, harmful bacteria that can kill you within a half an hour and you won't even know that you have, have it because it affects your respiratory. So you might think you're getting a heart attack, but it's actually brought about from either uh, it could be from eating fish that have, you know, been in the water or that in some way you have uh, ingested it. And um, so that was a very, um, I then said, well, then how do we test for that? How often? He said, I'll have to give you another name. So then I called someone else to find out that we only test once a year for that. Now that is very um, concerning to me. So we have several uh, ponds where people fish, like Beaver Pond. Ms. Bowen, you're at five minutes right now, so I'm going to have to cut you off. Okay. Uh, then I will um, bring this up, and we'll be, do I understand, we'll be discussing this on August 16th? In the August meetings, yes. And also, obviously, you can always discuss it with our, our water uh, department as well. I think we do tests quite frequently. Not for that bacteria, not for algal. Okay, thank you. But, um, well, I'll go, you know, into that then at the next, yeah, the next meeting. One. And I don't know if the moms of Bartlett, did anybody from that organization come tonight? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the information. Anyone else like to address the board at this time? Good evening. My name is Roy Hunt. I'm here with my wife, Pam. Uh, Can you spell, your, address, please? spell your name and address, please? H-U-N-T, Roy, and Pam, 442 Hillendale Drive. And we're concerned on the, what the capacity of this Ashton Gardens is going to be. Or do you have an answer? We'll find out here pretty sh shortly at the committee of the whole meeting, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. That's it. Oh, and it's in our packets, so it's in there. Um, if somebody has it off the top. I of wanted to get it on record. I yeah. I thought that made a difference. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you, Roy. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Brian Ozog, O-Z-O-G, 568 Versailles, and that's in the Castle Creek subdivision. I'm actually stepping up to comment on one of the other items on the agenda, the Spalding Road Improvement Project. 
my wife here in the audience, I want to reserve a portion of my time so she can speak. She's quite well versed on the matter. <clears throat> As you're aware, global recycling occupies the, the intersection of Lambert and Spalding. Uh, global recycling is currently their employees, staff members, and customers are par parking along the Spalding Road directly in front of Lambert. Uh, that area is becoming quite congested between that parking and the truck traffic that's going in and out of the existing entryway. The proposal, if I understand it correctly, is to move that driveway onto Lambert, which is a no truck zone, um, which would be interesting in and of itself. It may also encourage additional parking along Lambert, which doesn't currently exist by staff members and customers. It will also cause, without, without a turn lane at that location, trucks backing in or pulling out of that location to congest Lambert further. Uh, that includes, there are only two points of egress and ingress into the Castle Creek subdivision, one existing at Lake and Lambert, which is also occupied by a commercial trucking industry, and another one's going to next door. And then, of course, at Spalding and Lambert, which makes it extremely difficult, uh, whether it's bus traffic, school traffic, or individuals trying to get to work to get out in the morning. Those trucks are there as early as 7 o'clock. And uh, it's becoming quite congested. As I said, I wanted to reserve some of my time for my wife to step up. Thank you, Brian. Hi, I'm Allison Ozog, 568 Versailles Drive. Um, in regards to the uh, Spalding improvement, I believe the only time we ever heard this was from the Bartlett Examiner. I've talked to several residents in uh, Castle Creek and nobody knew anything about this. Um, one of my biggest concerns is the safety of it. There's a park right down the road that now you would have trucks going in and out. There's already trucks that come and violate the no truck rule on that street and now that you're inviting more stuff. Every morning I cross the uh, Metra and the um, CNN railroads every morning and I get stalled by a empty humongous uh, truck that has to back up into global recycling. I have several pictures that I just dropped <laughs> but um, that shows all the time that they're blocking the intersection. I understand it is a blind spot right there and they're not supposed to be parking there but they do. Today, there are up to seven cars on our street of Spalding. And now if you move the entrance to Lambert, now you're going to have all of that on Lambert. There's also inappropriate behavior that these trucks do while they are waiting to the uh, global recycling to open up. And unfortunately, I get to witness that while I wait to cross the tracks. Um, so I would appreciate, I believe this is part of the quiet zone, is what we tried to uh, research on that to try to, uh, so the Metro doesn't have to blow its horn. It was supposed to be a no, blow, uh, no horn section. Um, me personally, I would rather have the horn than the traffic on Lambert. So, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, I'm the resident of 204 Leader Trail and my name is Ishra Sabor. I'm concerned about the construction of Ashton Garden because of the pollution noise, and they are going to make the retention pond close to my backyard. So I'm very much concerned about it. Okay, thank you for your comments. Do you want me to ask her how to spell her name? <laughs> Ma'am? Lady that was just up, can you repeat your address, please? Yeah. Uh, 204 Lido Trail. 204. 204 Lido. 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 Lido Trail. Lido. Yeah. Lido. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Monica Radicic, 216 Lido Trail. I live there with my husband and a child, 11 year old daughter. And um, I'm amazed that property like this is even being considered for our neighborhood. The area may be zoned commercial, but a simple drive over there would show that it is surrounded by houses and townhouses on all four sides. This strip mall, this small strip mall on the corner does not change this fact. 
on two sides of the property will be adjacent to people's backyards. One is mine. You are considering putting a venue in our neighborhood that will be noisy, cause traffic congestion, and despite anyone's best efforts, will introduce drunk drivers onto our streets where kids play. How can, you, how can, of us, how can any of us feel safe having our kids outside without the venue next door? We live in Bartlett because it is safe, quiet, and has good schools. A couple months ago, Bartlett was ranked one of the top 20 safest neighbors, uh, neighborhoods in the nation. Three years ago, it was number three. With this venue, Bartlett will no longer be loud, will no longer be safe, and will be loud. After all these issues start, we will have a hard time moving. Our property values will drop, along with our house being a lot less desirable. Our property is finally regaining its value. Now Ashton Gardens is threatening that recovery. I have not even talked about the workers and 300 guests parking on our streets. No one can claim the parking for 130 cars is satisfactory. If they do, they are lying. So where those cars park, they will be loud partying guests and drivers that have been drinking and they will be parked in our neighborhoods. What will you say to the family that loses a child to a drunk driver? Thank you, Monica. Good evening, everyone. My name is Krishna Kalagara. Krishna. Krishna, K-R-I-S-H-N-A. Kalagara, 637 Versailles Drive, Bartlett, from the Castle Creek of Bartlett community. I'm here uh, to uh, just to support what Mrs. And Mr. and Mrs. Ozog had mentioned about the uh, proposal to move the entrance for this uh, auto junkyard from Spalding to Lambert. Uh, we've been already having a lot of problems with the truck entrance we have on Spalding right now with trucks backing out and then trucks and uh, pickups and customers parking their cars and trucks on the blind spot, which is a real, real blind spot and that has never been addressed. And uh, this Lambert has been a quiet road until so far. Uh, and there is a no truck entrance right at the beginning of the Lambert Road, and I don't know how it could be made into a truck entrance when there is a, it's a no truck zone for the Lambert Road. And the second thing is there is a bike and a walkway starting from the Spalling Road on the I don't know, is that north or south side of the Lambert? It goes all the way up to Edinburgh, which is a wide uh, walkway and a bike path, and we see families and kids and everybody riding and walking, dogs walking the road, so that's going to disrupt the, the whole purpose of the bike path. And uh, I would request the board to see what can be done to stop this and then improve that intersection parking. And I know it's a Illinois law or Bartlett law that trucks or no car should be parked so feet, so much distance from an intersection. And that's a very uh, uh, intersection where it have, we have the train tracks in, in very close proximity and then trucks are parked across the uh, very, I mean right at the intersection, which is a very, uh, I mean, uh, causing problems and then very, so I would request uh, the village board to see what can be done to stop this proposal and also to improve the parking conditions and uh, in and out conditions at the current entrance to the junkyard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. Excuse me, I gotta put the cheaters on. Hi, my name is Jim Sauter. I live at 237 John Drive. I believe it's lot 25 in East Point Estates. The reason I'm here is to oppose the Ashton Gardens uh, reception area that's gonna be going up. And the reason is I believe it's gonna change our neighborhood a lot, okay, just with the parking. I went to a meeting at Pasta Mia and I met the gentleman who's gonna be putting it up, and I talked to him, and he was telling me, because I asked him what's the matter with like Bartlett Fresh Market or Dominic's, why couldn't we just revamp that area? And he said that it's not the way he wants his building to be. He'd have to tear it all down in order for him to put that up. And I understand that, okay, he's got a vision that he wants to put up and stuff like that, but 
the overflow, he said he was going to have a, uh, parking spots of 143 people. And then when I went to the village uh, planning commission, like two days later, I talked to the lady, I'm sorry, I, I forgot her name, but she told me she had to revamp that parking area and brought it down to 133. And then he's going to have 30 employees working there. So now there's 103 spots available. And then she said she's going to talk to him and see if she can convince him to use like the Gorski parking lot, which is the Bartlett Fresh Market. And she said that, you know, that's all she can do is just ask her to do that. Well, my concern is when you're leaving Prospect, because there's an exit on, going on Prospect, if you take a left, you'll hit the stoplight. If you take a right, you go down Prospect heading south. And what not, my concern is those people turning right, well, they'd make another right, go down Lido, and now at 11 o'clock, you have a big traffic jam coming through our neighborhood. In the afternoon, if he has a wedding reception at 5 o'clock, is that going to be the same concern? Because these people, I mean, if I was doing it, I'd do the same thing. <coughs> I'd probably come out that parking lot, see the stoplight, and say, you know what? I'm not going to wait here. I'm going to make a right-hand turn, and I'll come through to the subdivision. And when I brought that up to her, she said, it's a public street, and anybody can park there. I understand that, but if the parking lot's filled, and they don't want to walk from Gorski's all the way back over to where Ashton's Garden's going to be. I'm telling you, they're going to park on Lido. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it, and they're going to walk around. Half of them are probably going to try and go through the yards and find out there's an eight-foot fence there. And I doubt that anybody in a suit and a dress is going to try and hop a fence, so that means they're probably going to have to come back again. So those are my concerns there. And then the hours of operation. Okay, I was under the impression it was only going to go to 1130. Then a letter got passed around our neighborhood saying it's going to go till 1230. So those people could be exiting at 1230. After, you know what, I was young, you know, 20 to 30 years old, popping the beers and stuff like that, having beers in a parking lot. And then he made a comment that he's going to have security there. And then he said he's going to have armed security there. And I'd like to know what kind of crowd are we going to be having here that we need armed security? Okay, and then what I don't understand is that the village of Bartlett owns Bartlett Hills and the park district owns Villa Olivia. And there's two places where we have reception halls and you're asking this guy to come in to build a reception hall that's going to take business away from us. That, you know what, those are my tax dollars going there. And the amount of money that we pay for taxes now is quite a bit. And I'd like to know also what kind of tax incentive is he getting, if he's getting any, I don't know, okay? That's, but I would like to go on record saying I'd like to know what it will be if you guys are going to give him any. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. I'm Angelita Garcia. I live in 624 Grenache Court, and I am here to um, speak against building Ashton Gardens in our neighborhood. I may, my residence may not be directly beside uh, Ashton because we have this, um, this uh, vacant lot. I believe it's part of, part of the park district. However, I am concerned about our property taxes going down and the quality of our neighborhood, um, potential for drunk driving, mm -hmm. um, safety of our children and our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Joe Zeibel, I am at 213 John Drive. My wife and I have been residents for 23 years in the uh, East Point Estates. Glad to see all my fellow neighbors here. The police department, we, we've gotten to know each other fairly well over the years because I have some teenagers. And uh, they've always done a good job. I'd like to welcome the veterans here and thank you for coming. Uh, I have two issues. I support uh, not putting in the permission for this building and the business. Okay, all of my neighbors have voiced the, their opinions very clearly, and I support that. But the number two item is the traffic, okay? Our neighbors at 233 uh, Lido a few months ago had a professional event at the house. 
They were very courteous. They arranged for a valet uh, uh, service to park cars, and they parked in the neighborhood, and that was fine. It was a professional event. And when we were, we were allowing ourselves to come out, people were going into that subdivision at Lido. There's no room if you have cars parked on the street on each side of Lido, the north and the south side of Lido, and a car coming and going in Toledo, at the same time, there's not enough room for there to be a safe egress and access to that location. Has anybody looked at the idea of putting in no parking signs there? Uh, currently without Ashton even going in, that's a separate yeah. issue you're saying? Yeah. I don't believe we have, but we can certainly. Would that be a good idea? We could, that's, that's why we have people come up and talk to us. That's, that's exactly what my point is. Okay. If you decide, that you're going to grant permission to this, I would suggest strongly that that's something that you consider. It's a safety hazard. If while I was coming in, my the back end of my car was sticking out on uh, Prospect, and somebody came in and tapped me. I'm just waiting for somebody else to move in and move out. There's no room when there's cars parked on both sides of the street, people, people coming east and west. Okay. No parking this side of the street type thing? Both sides of the street. Okay. Okay? All right. That's all I have. Thank you, Joe. My name is Scott Erickson. I live at 211 Lido Trail. I represent probably uh, the East Point Estate uh, subdivision. Um, 20 to 30 percent of the um, residents are here today. In my um, survey that I've done, um, majority of the uh, residents at East Point Estates are um, opposed to this, and I just want to put that on record um, as my um, uh, preliminary uh, survey, but <clears throat> naturally concerning to all of us in the subdivision will be the effects of this facility on our quality of life, property values, and all the other things that people have been mentioning. Uh, so far, it's been a peaceful, tranquil type uh, neighborhood for us to grow that uh, we've uh, raised our families and I've been there 20 some years. Um, however, we all need to understand the facility like this is going to bring in uh, people, traffic, noise, orders, activity. Uh, we all understand the business side of this. And um, the um, primary concerns that we have right now, obviously, are what has been brought up, the roadways, um, drunk drivers, and safety to Bartlett families, uh, spillover parking into, uh, you know, legal, legally parking into our streets, um, back-to-back -back weddings, back-to-back -back events. Um, how are these things going to be, you know, worked through the transition period where you've got excessive cars for um, a few hours, if that ever does happen? Um, noise. Um, how are we going to deal with the loud noise coming out of the building? And I know the, <clears throat> the builder is um, promoting uh, quiet uh, walls and um, um, uh, He's saying that the, um, the noise will not transmit, but as an engineer, I know low frequencies get through anything. High frequencies don't, so we will hear thumping. Um, and then we're going to also hear the thumping of the guest cars in the parking lot. Um, a lot of the people that back up to that um, facility have two-story homes, and the fence that's being built is one story. So when they're up in their bedrooms, they're going to look down and they're going to see and hear all the effects of that parking lot. Um, <clears throat> and then what about the, the, the dumpsters and the loud banging of garbage trucks and things that happen at 9 o'clock on Monday morning? I mean, these things can be worked through somehow, but we want to make sure that they're addressed. And um, finally, what someone else mentioned earlier, what are the rules as far as the future? Um, it's a great concept. Um, we've seen um, on their website um, uh, great examples of how they uh, um, have, have this type of a business, but if it does fail, um, what happens? Um, what happens to the buildings? Can they be um, um, uh, changed? And uh, who's going to move in some of these buildings? What types of 
businesses can go into these buildings. So with that, I want to just leave uh, three things. <clears throat> I've got um, pictures of uh, what Lido Trail, which is the primary one, what that looks like when it is fully loaded with cars. I just want to submit that as a piece of um, um, uh, an item to um, put for the record. Um, we've got some photographs here of typical facilities um, like the Seville, which is right on Barrington Road, we all know of, um, although it's a completely different type of facility. But there are things around it like, uh, you know, dumpsters and smoking lounges and things like that that um, maybe will not happen at this place, but something to consider. And then finally, um, we've got some aerial views here of their facilities at uh, where they are located elsewhere in the United States. And from what I've gathered, most of them um, have a barrier of um, trees, uh, forests, and um, uh, they don't seem to be too close to neighbors like they are going to be here. So with that, I close. Thank you, Mr. Erickson. Are we going to have those photographs introduced into the record? Yeah. This has been pretty good. Would anyone else like to address the board at this time? Hello, my name is Sofia Patkowitz. I live on 432 Anita Drive in East Point Estate. I just want to ask, did anybody even thought that the baseball park is right there and, and those weddings many times are not exactly at 5 o'clock? Many of them are 12 and lunch after all or showers or uh, wedding showers or whatever. There are kids driving bicycles to the park for the games and uh, not always with the parents. Did anybody even thought that that could be a hazard for the kids with so many cars and all that. Besides, also, I just want to point that uh, the, the dumpster with the garbage pickup and so we can hear train, which is no problem. We can set up a, even a clock against the trains running through, but there is no, it's like almost a mile away. So dumpster next door to us, it would be just unbelievable noise to us. I would think, and that it's not going to be only on Saturday. It most likely will be at least Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and not only like one wedding and one, some kind of party or so. I don't think this is the right place for such events and for the business like that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else at this point like to address the board? What's that? If you'd like to, open open mic for the next two minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do I have three minutes? Yes, you do. I'm not sure I can. <clears throat> it's not a hard three. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, and, and I. Thank the residents. This is a pretty good crowd, huh? Yeah, we, we draw pretty good crowds. Um, uh, the the questions and comments and concerns of the residents are exactly the same everywhere we go. Um, I wrote down about 18 items that I would have to consider speculation, but I'll be happy to address quite a few of them. But I can tell you in general, and there are letters on record to the city from uh, at least uh, uh, two cities where uh, uh, current Texas and Sugar Hill, Georgia, outside of Dallas and Atlanta, respectively, from the mayors praising our business um, and our community involvement and our good neighboring. Um, we have three properties, actually, that three out of the four current properties that are directly adjacent to uh, homeowners uh, two of them virtually exactly the same number that we have here um, and have not um, 
had any issues w with them at all. A lot of the a lot of the concerns. Um, private dance club. We're not a private dance club. Um, we're a very high end, uh, very expensive wedding facility. Um, the staff that we have, uh, our company is run by um, the top professionals in the industry. Um, our level of integrity and business ethics and concern for the community and our neighbors is better than any business that I know. Um, so we understand the value of that. We understand the value of being a good neighbor. We understand the value of being an invisible neighbor at times. Um, um, there are things required by Ashton Gardens um, that uh, is, it's, it's certainly uh, available to the public. There are traffic studies done uh, at our expense. The traffic studies show uh, that there will be uh, uh, no impact on um, from a, a matter of congestion or otherwise, even during peak hours. It shows maximum usage uh, on a Friday afternoon between 5 and 6 at the corner of Bartlett and Prospect on Bartlett, going either way at 86 percent, uh, a maximum potential of 86 percent. Um, we have, uh, uh, there are, and, and, and by the way, we, we have to follow laws and ordinances and regulations set up by the state and set up by the county and set up by this uh, this village. Um, so uh, it, it's very tight and very restrictive, uh, or we couldn't even get this far. Um, our parking uh, is adequate by everybody's calculation. Um, uh, should there be a need for parking, we're going we we're, we're going to um, find some uh, a local business that has some uh, a parking lot that we can. Um, uh, we can use the parking and shuttle. Uh, probably first people that would that would use off-site parking would be our staff. We haven't had to use it yet at any property. Doesn't mean we won't. I understand that. There's first time for everything. But our, our parking meets uh, and exceeds all of the requirements um, set up and reviewed and approved by the village. Um, uh, Scott, I respect that you're an engineer, but our you won't hear noise out of our buildings. <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy to show you the plans. Pretty darn solid. Um, now you, maybe if you get up and put your ear by the window or something, but you won't hear it in your, you will not hear it at the homes. At the risk of being too repetitive, I, I can assure you you're going to have to answer all these questions again at the committee as a whole. So you could wait and answer them all again because we'll ask you all of these again. Great. Yeah. Well, why don't we do that? Okay. All I can say is yep. we, we, uh, we, uh, we appreciate the input. Um, <clears throat> You know, our our view is uh, we think it's a it has been for all the other cities. Uh, you know, the location is great for us uh, for a lot of reasons. We spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of study on this location. Um, we think it's it's a good business for the community. We're going to be really great neighbors, um, and uh, again, be happy to address any of the concerns. And um, I will just close in saying, you know, there's we we can there's all kinds of speculation on what could happen. Um, we have responses or requirements that will address many of those, and I guess that's on the 11th. And the committee of the whole, yeah. I look forward to that. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Would anybody else like to address? Can I hold you to the quick or not? Good evening. My name is Mike Baggett, B-A-G-G-O-T. I live at 200 West Lido. Uh, I've been a resident for 34 years. I grew up here. Uh, I moved back here with my children. I actually bought at East Point with the intention of leaving there the rest of my life. Uh, and my children know, know no other home. Um, I want to address some things that Mr. Schreiber said. Uh, another personal note, I'm an attorney. I do insurance defense work. I represent companies like Mr. Schreiber's. I represent bars. Unfortunately, you're going to have intoxicated people at the facility. Regardless of what he says or may not happen, it happens everywhere. There's going to be drunks there. There's going to be fights there. There's going to be incidents there. Look at Cadillac Ranch. How many calls do you have in a night on a Friday or Saturday night at Cadillac Ranch? And now you're going to move that into a neighborhood where children are playing? It's a public safety issue. You're the custodians of the village. Do what's right. It's public safety. It's personal safety. I've got a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old. I will not leave them a home alone while there's an event going on at Ashton Gardens now. I will probably have to move out of that, that street if, that, if this happens. We have to look at potential liability for the neighbors, 
for things that happen with all the people who are drinking there. You go to reception to have a good time, and you're going to go there to drink. Whether it's 300 or 150, whether it's two people who are drunk. I represented many places like this where fights happen. People have been killed. Look up at the William Tell Inn in, in Chicago. There was a killing there. Look at JB's. Killings are there. It happens. We've got to protect the community. You're the custodians. Do what's right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matt. Real quick, is it okay if I were to submit these photos of the Spalding intersection right now? Sure. It's a pretty tough act to follow. Does anybody else want to go after him? Uh, hi, my name is Scott Ummel. I live at uh, 225 John Drive. Um, I'm one of probably the only two youth here, um, so I'd like to give my kind of perspective in it. Um, I'm also a part of the National Guard as a military police officer. Um, my perspective is purely law enforcement side. Um, correct me if I'm long for, wrong from the law enforcement standpoint, but we have five sectors in, in Bartlett. Um, I've done many ride-alongs with Bartlett, and I've um, been on many DUI calls in Bartlett. Um, with the DUI call, if you have a fight, there's going to be multiple officers responding. So there you have two, possibly three sectors that are not covered in Bartlett anymore. Um, if there's a DUI, that DUI takes a lot of time, up to hours, to be able to process where you now have officers who are supposed to be guarding and safekeeping the rest of this community in their, in their sectors who are gone for hours on end, possibly, because they have to call the state. They have to do many things in their process. So with, with, if there's a fight, there might be even more. So now you have a whole town who is not being safekeep or guarded by the people who are supposed to do that because of one establishment. Plus, we have Bartlett Hills Golf Course. That's a, a beautiful uh, venue for a wedding. We have Cadillac Ranch, like they said. There's many places that these, peop these uh, law enforcement agents have to guard. So um, another thing is that um, from the Ashton Gardens representative, he uh, appointed a lot of opinions as facts, I believe. So um, I would just like to see some of those um, facts backed up by statistics. Like he said, that there, um, you're not going to hear any music. Um, I would like to see a test done by that. How, can, how do you know? He's, he's just pointing out opinions in his part that he's presenting as facts. So that's all I have. Thank you. Hello, I'm Patty Ummel, 225 John Drive. I'm that young man's mother. <laughs> um, they have known nothing but to grow up in this house in Bartlett. And he's very emotional about it, as is everybody here. We don't understand it. We don't get it. It's not the right thing to do. I don't know. Um, well, it, what other thing was concerning me is when we got a note in our neighborhood saying that, as you might already know, we've purchased this property. Actually, no, we didn't already know this. And it's not okay. And you can't just say, by the way, we purchased it and this is, you know, it's gonna be beautiful and blah, blah, blah. We don't, it, it doesn't sit right with us. We don't want it there. We've been living there for 22 years. It's the wrong thing to do. I don't know what else happens because I don't know all the politics of this, but um, this should say pretty much it all and how we feel. And if it, it would be a devastating thing for this community to have the people that have been here backing up Bartlett to actually have to leave Bartlett because of something like this, which a couple people mentioned and I'm even thinking about. So I just wanted to say I appreciate my son saying something that, that takes a lot of courage to come up here. I wasn't even going to do anything, but I, ca I can't just let him do this by himself. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? So we have a lot of questions coming up. Traffic, parking, competition, tax incentives. No parking on certain sides of the street. Rules for the future. Resident safety. 
patrolling situations, noise. These are all questions that will be answered or asked during the oh, Committee of the Whole. So thank you for being here and voicing your opinion. If there's no one else who'd like to address the board, we will move on with our meeting. And that brings us to the um, standing committee reports portion of the meeting this evening. First standing committee report is the uh, Planning and Zoning Committee, Chairman Ranke. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the first item uh, was addressed on the consent agenda, uh, which brings us to item number two, the Class 6B application for 802 West Devon Avenue. Um, and for that, I'll, I'll turn it over to staff. Our George Ray Ray V. Leotis, on behalf of his client, is requesting a resolution from the village supporting its Class 6B application for the former main steel plant at 802 East Devon Avenue. Uh, the applicant proposes purchasing, rehabilitating, and dividing the building into smaller units while lowering the property taxes and making the building more attractive to prospective <coughs> tenants. The Class 6B incentive lowers the property's assessment to 10% of the market value for the first 10 years, 15% in the 11th year, and 20% in the 12th year, constituting a substantial reduction in the level of assessment from the normal 25%. Um, applications to the Cook County Assessor must include a resolution or ordinance from the property's municipality supporting the application. And uh, if they do get this, they, they will be looking at a total cost savings of about $2.1 million in property taxes. And the petitioner is here and would like to uh, introduce themselves. Mr. Mayor, trustees, city officials, good evening. My name is George Bavaliotis. I'm an attorney, and I represent Dimitrios Poulokefalos, the prospective purchaser of 802 Divan Avenue in Bartlett. The subject property consists of approximately 89,000 square feet. It's an industrial building. It's in, Cook, it's in the Cook County part of the village. And the subject property has been vacant for at least two years. In Cook County, there is a program, a tax incentive program, which is called the Class 6B. And in Cook County, uh, the properties are assessed on a two-tiered basis. Commercial and industrial properties are assessed at 25% of fair market value, while residential and residential mixed use are assessed at 10% of fair market value. In all, in all the other counties in the state of Illinois, all properties are assessed at 33 and one-third, regardless of the type. Uh, there are main differences between the tax formulas, between how the tax formula, what numbers are used uh, in the equalization factor and the tax rates. Uh, but one thing is for sure. Uh, commercial and industrial properties that are in Cook County pay more tax on a per square footage basis than commercial and industrial in DuPage County. Um, considering that the subject property has been vacant for at least two years, and considering that the property is functionally, that the building is functionally obsolescent in that it does not meet today's uh, tenants or industrial needs, and also considering that it is in the Cook County part of Bartlett, in that it pays probably a little bit over double of what the DuPage counterpart industrial properties pay on a per square footage basis. And also, finally, considering the significant monetary investment that the prospective purchaser, my client, will put into the property of at least between four and five million dollars over and above the purchase price. Uh, we are here tonight respectfully asking for the board uh, to approve the Class 6B property tax incentive. Um, with me tonight is the prospective purchaser, Dimitrios Poulokefalos of uh, Poulokefalos Enterprises, as well as his architect, Mr. Bart Kalata. Uh, one thing uh, that I'd like to finish uh, my part of the presentation tonight is that Mr. Poulokefalos is a seasoned property owner. He is owner uh, of AGT Technologies. And um, this company makes plastics. And they hold various patents. 
and some of, these, some of the plastic goods that AGT Technologies makes. Uh, for example, when you open a Motorola cell phone, it's the plastic packaging that protects it in the package. Uh, when you go into a Walmart or any other big uh, supermarket, for example, and you look in, right in the display case or where the product is hanging, there's a plastic uh, casing in which the description of the product is. Uh, Mr. Polokefalos makes that plastic casing, for example. Um, so, and just recently, um, in addition to the AGT technologies, Mr. Polokefalos has been investing in industrial properties, the most recent of which being 150 Gaylord in Elk Grove Village, in which there too he had taken a functionally obsolescent building and uh, demolished approximately 75% of it and substantially renovated uh, and rebuilt that structure. And within uh, months of completing, he was able to successfully find uh, a good quality tenant. And this is the aim um, of the proposed project here on Divan uh, Avenue. One thing or one aspect of the substantial improvement will be increasing the height of the, of the ceiling from where it's at now between 15 and 20 feet to at least 30 to 35 feet um, and also enhancing the electrical uh, voltage, for example, and also uh, compartmentalizing the building. Currently, it's at 80,000, uh, I'm sorry, it's at approximately 89,000 square feet, single use. And we believe that compartmentalizing the, <coughs> the various components would maximize the chances of uh, partial to full occupancy versus its current status of complete vacancy. Um, at this point, um, I'd like to introduce to you Dimitrios Poulokefalos and the architect for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Well, I, I have a few questions. Um, do you have any idea how many different um, tenant spaces you're going to have in the building? How many different tenants? How many different tenants? It's going to be divided into four different tenants. Okay. Can you use the microphone, please? Sorry, apologies. The building is going to be divided in four different tenants. It will be 25,000 square feet increments and a 40,000 square feet increment, 43, somewhere there. Do you have tenants lined up? No. The one tenant might be in, myself, I won't bring my own business in there, just to occupy the 40,000 square feet, 30, 40 employees. And in order to do that, you'll need to raise the roof, literally. Uh, the the, the 40,000 square feet, no, the 80,000 square feet, we we'll demolish it and bring it up from ground up to 35, to 30 to 35. Excuse me. We are, we are proposing to remove uh, approximately 48,000 square feet and keep one section of the building, which consists of about 42,000 square feet, which is actually on the picture. And what we're proposing to do is to remove the exterior envelope and replace it uh, with new brick and block. Uh, that height of the building, uh, of that existing building, will remain. But what we're doing, we're proposing uh, addition to the existing building, which will be about 75,000 square feet, which will be equally divided into uh, three additional units. And those units, you know, they will, they will have increased in the uh, roof height, as well as the envelope construction of the addition will be consistent with what we're proposing uh, for the renovation. Have they uh, submitted any site plans or concept plans for staff review? Have we seen anything like that? No, they actually, every, they have not done any, any of that yet. They're just looking to get the incentive from Cook County first. And, and I think that uh, our understanding, at least initially, is that the incentive was more clear cut uh, than, than they're indicating now, and probably we would have had this on committee for some more in-depth questioning had we understood the in, uh, uh, depth of this. And so you may want to wait until you have some additional information, particularly about the tenants, to uh, move ahead with the incentive. And I, I, you know, I can't speak for the entire board, but obviously, you know, we want to see development. This space 
has been vacant for a long time. The 6B program is out there. Um, but at the same time, it seems like we need some more information. And it seems like you folks need to talk about our plans. So um, if it's all right with the board, I, I guess procedurally, I have to make a motion and then we have to move the table it. Okay. If I may, if I may. The, the ordinance allows for, well, the, the Class 6B uh, program will not be implemented by the assessor unless an occupancy permit is issued. However, without an ordinance, there, there is no roadmap that's put into place. Uh, but the Class 6B incentive is only implemented by the assessor, or the assessor will only implement the Class 6B program onto the assessment only when there's occupancy in the building. Okay. So what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, is you need the 6B in order to start the horse. In order to make the considerable four to five million dollars, it's good knowing that there is the Class 6B, which will enhance or enable that cash flow. And at that yeah, point, we would go back to committee. So, and at the same time, I mean, I think it's important to understand what's going on. I mean, uh, with the property before the, the board consents to this, I mean, uh, we're conceivably losing some tax revenue, and you're talking about replacing. It sounds like most of the building, most yes. of the building. So this is a so the more, much more complicated than just a six B. The class six B can be given under three different scenarios. Number one is reoccupancy of a vacant building, a building that's been vacant for at least two years. And here it meets that criteria. Or construction of a new building. And here as well we are meeting that criteria. Or number three, substantial rehabilitation. Um, so you can grant it either on one or the second or the third. Okay. Here we're presenting all three. And um, we believe that with a considerable investment of four to five million, and also considering that, that because the building is so functionally obsolescent, 15 feet ceilings will not accommodate today's typical industrial needs. And where the tax is at uh, its current level right now, it's at, with vacancy, it's at $99,530. With the incentive and occupancy, it would be increased to $129,000. And that's also after a considerable investment of between four to five million. But to the community, what does that mean? That means all the incidental benefit that would be achieved. And that is you have human beings coming in and out of that building. You have people going out to lunch at local restaurants, Starbucks, coffee shops, whatever the case may be. You have, um, you know, people that could potentially be um, employed at this facility, people that live in Bartlett, for example. So um, there is a considerable amount of incidental benefit aside from the direct benefit. Um, so th this is a building that if it continues to remain vacant, it'll just become, I mean, completely useless. And vacant buildings... Buildings don't like to be vacant. Not only that, though, but insurance costs are much, much higher because of the potential hazards that vacant buildings can pose to a community. I think filling it up with that considerable monetary investment, making it modern, making it con contemporary, and also putting it on a level playing field with other industrial properties on the DuPage side of Bartlett, I think it's only a plus-plus. I think it's a win-win situation for everybody. I need to ask a couple questions also. Do you have a contract on the building at this time? Yes, we do. You have a contract. Is the contract cont contingent upon the, uh, the uh, uh, Class 6B incentive? It is not. All right. Gentlemen, I'll tell you, I really, you know, I know we need additional information, but we'll, he'll have to go through uh, some work with staff. And I would think that rather than have them go back and do any additional research and spend any additional money, you know, that would just, the Class 6B which incentive would just be issued to this group. It wouldn't run with the land. I think we should uh, take a look at it and maybe move along with it. We've got, we have a building sitting down there right now that's vacant. I mean, and here we have some people that are eligible, uh, that uh, are, are being creative and trying to do something with this and bring it back into a workable situation, put it back on, for the most part, you know, offer jobs and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I, I would have a problem tabling it.
Okay, I think I would move forward with it this evening. Okay. Can I ask a question? How many other potential suitors for that building have we seen We've in had, the last two uh, years? two since the time that Main Steel left. And have they all uh, proposed a 6B or were some no, of them coming in? No, they have not. They have not. But it wasn't at the two-year marker yet? No, I don't think we're at the two-year marker yet. We are now, right? Yeah, I yes. think we are. And, and I think that we're not, you know, saying that, that the board should not do this. I think there's a lot of information that would typically cause us to be a committee where there's an opportunity to ask these kinds of questions that we don't usually do at a board level, and this really should have gone to committee. Well, I, I disagree a little bit because they need some type of uh, assurance that if it does go forward, then the 6B is a possibility, whereas if we don't act tonight, they won't even know if it's a possibility. Right. So it's kind of a car, uh, chicken and egg type of a situation for the developer, right? Okay, so then... And uh, I know Fashion is, is saying yes to this application for a 6B, saying yes to any, in, any type of building out there because you'll have to have, I'm assuming you're going to have to have building permits. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Considering the amount of, the, of, the, of alteration and new construction that will occur, there must be building permits. Not only that, though, but... The Class 6B, if, if you decide to grant it tonight, it's not something that will be implemented tomorrow. It's something that after approvals by the village and, and the officials, um, and only upon issuance of an occupancy permit will the assessor implement the Class 6B. So it's not something where you can grant the Class 6B and then the property owner can lay idle and let it be vacant for 10 years and enjoy that Class 6B mm -hmm. for a period of 10 years. No. In, from, from, from the time of acquisition, from, from the time of purchase, until the, the time of occupancy, the, the incentive to race, to find occupancy, mm -hmm. is there. The, the incentive is there. And that incentive is a Class 6B. Yeah. In, in, build, in, in doing the necessary improvements to the structure to bring it to that occupancy state. state. I, do we know? Do we know what whether they are going to need a variation to raise the, the building height to what they're proposing? It will have to come through the site plan review, and at that time we would see if they would also need a variation. So it would come back before this board. So even though we may approve this ordinance, we do have recourse. Correct. Okay. But let, but let's turn it around. Let's assume that uh, the purchaser closes, we granted the 6B, and they decide not to make improvements to the building, but the building is in such condition that they can get the CO. The 6B has, has very specific requirements in order to get the money. So they have to use a certain amount of money for rehabilitation, and um, so they would have to make some type of improvements and follow those guidelines. So they'll also have to go through Cook County and us. Okay. All right, I uh, move to approve resolution 2016. 58. 58, a resolution consenting to and supporting approval of Class 6B classification for the abandoned property commonly known as 802 East Devon Avenue, Bartlett, Illinois. Second. Two by Trustee Ranke, uh, second by Trustee Kammerer. Is there any additional discussion? Do we know what the loss of revenue will be to the Village of Bartlett if we grant this? No, we do not. Well, it's is the good. impact spread over all three counties, or is it just spread over Cook County? No, it's just Cook County. So the Cook County taxpayers will make up the difference? Uh, all, all of them, yes. All the counties in Bartlett will? All of all. The entirety of Cook County. No, I'm talking about the loss of revenue to Bartlett. When we do our levy, Will the loss be spread over all counties? Uh, I think yeah. I'm confused by the question. I mean, it's vacant right now and is probably getting tax relief to have lesser taxes because it's vacant. Mm -hmm. With these improvements, it'll be assessed higher. They would otherwise be higher, and the 6B gives them some tax relief for a period of 10 years, and then it ends, and then it kicks in at whatever the assessed value and, and times the rate, et cetera, would be. Um, 
That would be what they're saying is this allows them to make this obsolete building uh, where they're willing to invest the three or four million dollars in improvements. So those are going to get factored into the new assessment, but there would be some delay to where <clears throat> you would get all the taxes. It's a little bit like a TIF. Trustee Hopkins, we do have that number. I, I misspoke. Yeah, there's actually an exhibit in the packet of information. The fourth to last page actually goes over um, all of the money. It's okay. I may. Would it, would it be safe to say that the reduction in taxes because it's empty will, once it's been improved and developed, even the discounted Cook County tax rate will be higher than we'll, the yeah. empty. We'll come bill. out ahead. That will be the question we'll have on committee. It's about yeah. 30000 extra a year. Yes. Currently, right now, the taxes with vacancy, without the incentive, are at $99,530. And if the building were to be improved, occupied, with a Class 6B, at the current square footage, the tax would be approximately $129,000. There you go. And the current square footage is 89,000 square feet. The projected square footage after all the improvements will be approximately 113,000 square feet. So that 129,000 can potentially be 135, $140,000, for example. And in 10 years, it'll be double, triple that. That is correct, more than double. In the 13th year, it'll be more than double. Yep. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Ranke? Yes. Aarons? Yes. Hammer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. And resolution carries. Thank you. We thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for, uh, we look forward to working with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. That's all we have for planning and zoning tonight. Thank you, Chairman Ranke. Next we have on uh, standing committee reports is the building committee, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. We have nothing to report tonight. Chairman Hopkins. Next, we on the standing committee reports under Finance and Golf Committee, we have Chairman Daney. Mr. President, we have nothing to report this evening. Thank you, Chairman Daney. Next, under standing committee reports, uh, License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Aarons. Well, we've been very, very busy, and unfortunately, all of our items have been covered under the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chairman Aarons. Next item under Police and Health Committee, Chairman Carbonero. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing to report this evening. Thank you, Chairman Carbonero. And finally, for our standing committee reports under Public Works Committee, Chairman Kammerer. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we do have one item, the Spalding Roadway Improvements. And um, we discussed at the last board me meeting, this went out uh, for bid, the Spalding Road Improvements that are necessary to obtain a quiet zone at the railway crossing. Five bids were submitted and opened on July 8th. Bids <coughs> range from a high of $448,243.40 to the low of $246,309.05. Schroeder Asphalt Services Incorporated submitted the low bid of $246,309.05. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Dan for any other further comments concerning this or staff. Um, anything else you have to add, then, Dan? Um, other than we've worked with Schroeder in the past and uh, they've done good work, so. We'd like to move forward. We need know. a motion and a second, then we can, we can have discussion. Motion. Second. Well, oh, I don't know if you made the motion. <laughs> so that being said, I move the uh, Village Board approve resolutions 2016-59. 59. A resolution approving the Spalding, Road, uh, Spalding Roadway Improvement Agreement between the Village of Bartlett and Schroeder Asphalt Services Incorporated. Second. Is moved by Trustee Kammerer, second by Trustee Daney, and I think we have some discussion on this. Well, well let, me, let me ask this. I don't think it's – what we're approving tonight is just part of the Spal Spalding Road improvement, so it doesn't directly correlate with the, the public comments. But what's going on with the parking over there? I mean, I saw those photos. The, the, you know, me, um, you got to do something about this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, what we did was, in the contract that the board approved last time, there's 10 off-street parking spaces that would be uh, on the village property uh, for which a license was granted that was part of what was improved, was this access. And then 
there were seven of those spaces we were going to pave. The owner of Global uh, Eagle Z LLC and the operator of Global Towing uh, was concerned that that wasn't enough parking and did not sign that agreement. We need an agreement with that owner to uh, facilitate so we can close down the entrance to the south end of that property. We met with him today <coughs> and talked about the ability for him to add 10 more spaces at his cost uh, where there'd be a license, he would pay the fair market value for that area to add more parking, and also the cost of filling the area and putting asphalt. So what we would uh, likely, what we would propose is we would bring that agreement back at the next meeting, and uh, the board would vote on that. His concern was that there isn't enough parking. He's parking in different places along Spalding, um, and claims that he hit 10. So if he's paying for it, we think this would solve that problem. And so um, I think everyone's saying the same thing. That being said, this contract, we're trying to get within the window of IDOT, I'm sorry, Metra doing the crossing improvements to try and save some money. And we're working, trying to find out what we can do to not block off his access, uh, make some of the improvements, the alternative entrance to the piece, um, approve this contract, but not issue it to the contractor until we're sure that we have this uh, gentleman's signature on a revised agreement and would not proceed until the board approves of the amendment at the next meeting. So uh, it's, you know, we'd like to approve the contract, but not commence, <laughs> the contractor commence work. To be sure we have uh, an agreement that uh, the board has seen and is comfortable with. And is that because the window that Metro is giving us? That's why we were pushing at the last time. Uh, we believed we had an agreement with this attorney, but he's been concerned about parking along and there be enough and I'm concerned with the public private benefit etc and that's where my qu my questions are have you seen those photos yeah and okay. I think this will solve I think what he's proposing solve that okay to yeah more so than what we had proposed we felt that 10 was what he had but when you factor in parking along Spalding etc you know, if you eliminate that, he probably does need the additional 10, but not on our time, on his time. Okay, so short answer, we're, we're, we're actually working to resolve the situation. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And it might be a little off character, but is Brian here? Does that sound like something that is, I mean, does it sound like it's a working situation? It, the entrance will be off of Lambert. They will be able to pull up as far as the entrance goes, even though it was no uh, parking. And sort of the trade-off is this quiet zone that will benefit over 2,000 residents. But there's no change in the trucks that go up and down Lambert. That restriction is still there, and we will ticket them if they do so. Yeah, once the... Con well. Right. Chief? Well, we got to work on well, that. That's a they, problem. they have access right now. We believe that the new access would be safer and more efficient. There would be some trucks, you know, utilizing Lambert to get in, but it'd be uh, safer. And they won't be able to travel down Lambert off of Lake Street once the improvements are done. When the roads are closed, there would be some truck traffic, but when the construction's being done. But once that's done, those same restrictions to keep them from going from Lake Street and pulling in there would, would remain in place. Okay, this was actually about all the parking you wanted to add. That we can go through the parking and leave there and wait until there's idle in town and we'll go jump there. Well, but this will get them 
off of Spalding and off of parking in wherever, there will be a lot off of the road on uh, adjacent to the piece. So further north? Of the further, road, right it would be just to the north of his piece along his fence, uh, along the fence. going west, lined up along the fence to the west. then we can enforce no parking and things at, at that point. But is there no parking at all right now? Or is there? I don't believe there's a parking restriction right now. You also have the dog park near there and things too. And people park for that as well. So the property or They will be allowed access off of Lambert, it's just a little further to the north. So they would be on that little stretch of Lambert, and the trade-off is the quiet zone that'll benefit all those other people and a safer access to their peace. No, there's still the no, there will still be the no truck zone, but for that little stretch of Lambert to their entrance. This sounds like something we need to work on with um, policing the law, I guess, would be the situation. Yep. We well, we got pictures of it, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, does everybody? Thank you. I think this is kind of a piecemeal deal, and we'll try to keep working on it. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Um, we'll do. Thank you, Mr. President. That's well, all we, we have for vote. this evening. We no, we have to vote. We didn't vote. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Aarons? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. And motion carries. Now that's all we have for this evening. Thank you, Chairman Cameron. Next item we have on our agenda this evening is new business. Is there any new business for the good of the order? Yeah, I have something, Mr. President. I have a request this evening. I would like to, uh, to recognize a special and dedicated individual. Uh, just let me read some of the accomplishments uh, of these numbered. Actually, they're 1 through 15. That's pretty amazing. Bicentennial Commission, 1975 for the U.S. birthday. Number two is the Park District Commissioner from 1979 to 1991. Three is Chairman of the Bartlett Salvation Army Unit. In 1982 through 2009, President of the Bartlett Chamber of Commerce in 1984. Five is the Park District President uh, in 1986. Six served on the Economic Development Commission in 1986. Number seven, I'm going to run out of breath. Seven, Zoning Board of Appeals served on that in 1987. Eight, it was El President of the Elgin PTO in 1990. Nine is the Chairperson for the Bartlett Centennial in 1991. Ten, this person was uh, became a Bartlett living legend in 1991. Uh, 11 was the advisory council for the Iowa State Parents in 1992 through 1995. 12, she was the first, uh, well, I gave it away, first chairman of the Bartlett Fourth of July Committee in 1993 through 1994. 13 was the Bartlett Veterans Memorial Foundation, served on that from 2006 through 2009. Uh, 14 is the president, she was the president of Bartlett Rotary in 2009, and lastly, village trustee from 1991 to the present. Also received a couple of different awards, which was the Melvin Jones Award issued by the Bartlett Lions Club in 2008, and the Paul Harris Fellow Bart issued by the Bartlett Rotary in uh, 2007. And with that, I'm asking, I'm I'm making a motion that uh, we uh, obtain a, a plaque for T.L. Aarons. That's what I was speaking of. And uh, we have this inscribed on that plaque, and then the plaque be placed on the village fountain in the, 
the downtown area. So with that, I make a motion. Um, oh you're supposed to mute, T.L. Um, does anybody have any discussion about it? I do. Don't forget I'm listening. <laughs> I think I think it's a very I think it's a very nice idea to honor uh, the the decades of work that Trustee Aarons has put into this community. I think it's part of who we are as Bartlett that we recognize people who step forward and and, and help. So I think it's a great idea, and I'm sure Brian's going to tell us that we're not going to vote on on the motion. No. Uh, that's not on the agenda, but it certainly seems to be the consensus of the board okay. that we want to move forward with, with yeah. how to do this. I think you left out a lot of information, Ray. She's been on the Lions Club for how many years, T.L.? Yeah. She's been on the Rotary Club for more years than I can count. She's been an active member of the community for a long, long time. Talk well, after, oh, putting, yeah. after, yeah. putting, after putting all this together, I know that uh, it will be... Uh, reviewed and scrutinized by some other individuals, and I'm sure there would be additions. This is not the final copy. Yeah. So I guess the directive is just to have uh, staff come up with some ideas or we can figure out, you know, what it would look like, a plaque or something. And I've got it all covered. Okay. All right. Great. Thank but, you, Ray. Okay. So Thank you. do we have a, a consensus from the board? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it's a great Thank idea. Thank you for bringing that yes. up, Ray. All right. All right. I'll move forward. Very good. Thank you, Ray. Thank Trustee Danny. I have I have a little something if if we just have a minute. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I was um uh, just happened to run across this little um, typewritten poem that was in some of my grandmother's papers. My grandmother, so you know she was um, uh, pretty old. Anyway, this poem reads: Five thousand years ago, she said. Pick up your shovel, mount your ass or camel, and I will lead you to the promised land. 5,000 years later, Roosevelt said, lay down your shovel, sit on your ass, and light up your camel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, if you don't watch out, Truman will take away your shovel and take away your promised land. I'm glad that I am an American. I'm glad that I am free. I wish I was a great big dog and Truman was a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, so unhappiness with leadership is not new at all. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Trustee Aarons. That was very enlightening. <laughs> with that, I will, uh, any questions at all? You know what we're going to do? We're probably going to take like a five-minute break. I think it'd be good for the board to breathe. Um, so we'll uh, um, take a five-minute break, and then we'll go directly into the village, uh, the committee of the whole meeting um, after a five-minute break. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Carabinero. Seconded by Trustee Ranky. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Aarons? Yes. Kammer? Yes. Carabinero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. We are adjourned.